Right, ladies and gentlemen, and this brings us to the very last speaker of this wonderful event, Megalithomania, South Africa, Johannesburg, 13 March 2011. And it gives me personally an absolute thrill to be able to announce a very special guest, Graham Hancock, who has played a very large role in inspiring me and in the work that I'm doing right now. And uh, I must tell you, Graham, that without you, I probably wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today. So a huge, huge word of gratitude to you and the immense work that you've done in this field. Thank you very much. I, there's no doubt that Graham's persistent work and research, and I trust his wife, Santa, has been there as a supporting pillar of strength all the time as these things go. And the photographer, I've been told to. <laughs> uh, and you've seen the spectacular photographs. So the amount of dedication and information that Graham has been able to share with the world is absolutely staggering. And tonight, the, the presentation title itself is just so absolutely intriguing and provocative. Elves, angels, aliens, and ayahuasca. Need I say more? Ladies and gentlemen, Graham Hancock. Thank you, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, before I begin uh, my talk, uh, I think we all know that uh, terrible events have unfolded in Japan uh, over the last days. Uh, terrible events, and as, as each hour passes, it becomes clear how awful uh, this disaster is. Upwards of 10,000 have died, if not more. The Earth's axis has been shifted several inches uh, out of line as a result of this earthquake. Uh, nuclear power plants are melting down, and, and so many human lives have been lost. So I would like to begin with one minute of silence as we put ourselves in spirit with the Japanese people and wish them for the best. Thank you. Um, if, I've, uh, if I've had any role as a researcher and as uh, a writer, um, it's been to push the envelope, to stand on the edge of things and, and uh, look at things from uh, a perspective that is not uh, mainstream. Uh, I've been um, <sighs> I've been running against the current for a very long time, and that is uh, expressed in in the body of work that I've that I've put before the public concerning the possibility of a great uh, forgotten episode in human history. Um, I like to think that the same perspective uh, bringing uh, a, a, a non-mainstream but, but reasoned out view of mysteries also uh, enlightens what I'm going to talk about tonight. 
many have found my uh, change of direction in my work uh, disturbing, particularly since the new work uh, does touch uh, profoundly on altered states of consciousness, and altered states of consciousness are a taboo subject in our society, which many people are, are um, very, very unwilling to think about and discuss, but they're central to what I'm going to talk about tonight. Um, and I'm going to be talking about uh, ayahuasca, the vine of the soul, which is used by shamans uh, in the Amazon to enter the spirit world and communicate with uh, entities in that realm. Um, during and after the research for my book, uh, my last non-fiction book, uh, Supernatural, um, I was given uh, a series of visions uh, by ayahuasca uh, in a series of five uh, sessions with ayahuasca in Brazil, uh, where I was um, given a whole, I was given a story, uh, and I was told to go away and write that story, uh, and that story is my first novel. Uh, entangled, uh, which concerns very briefly uh, two young women, one living 24,000 years ago in the past, her name is Rhea, uh, and another living uh, today in modern Los Angeles, her name is Leone. Uh, and they are brought together by supernatural forces uh, to do battle with a demon who travels through time and who seeks to divert humanity from our inherent goodness and turn us towards evil. So it's a book about the battle of good against evil, uh, and it's a book about uh, time travel. They believe uh, uh, in the Amazon that when your spirit leaves your body, you are free to move through all dimensions and through time itself. And uh, the possibility has recently been raised with, within quantum physics that time may not be an arrow. Uh, that it may be a series of spirals and loops that interconnect with one another. And it may even be possible for us to change the past just as we can change and choose the future. Um, and, and all of these uh, ideas and, and, and concepts came to me uh, through the work that I did uh, with, uh, with Ayahuasca and writing Supernatural. So I'm not going to talk about the novel tonight, but what I'm going to talk about is the research background behind the novel, uh, which, is, uh, which is laid out uh, in depth um, in, in my book, uh, Supernatural. And uh, I personally hope that some of my readers will come with me into this new journey into uh, fiction. Um, I've had a lot of my readers are very angry with me that I've written a novel. I've, had, I've, I've received some incredibly insulting and offensive emails about this. Um, but I, I feel, I feel um, very strongly, I felt very strongly called to write this novel, uh, and I feel that my path for however many years I have left is to explore extraordinary ideas uh, in the realm of uh, fiction rather than in the realm of non-fiction. One benefit of doing that at least is I don't have to argue with the academics anymore. I don't have to write books with 1,400 footnotes. Um, and, uh, you know, if they get upset with me about it, I can say, just relax, guys, it's just fantasy, you know. Um, and uh, it's allowed me to return to a place of freedom in my writing that I was really last in when I wrote Fingerprints of the Gods. After that, I felt my work became more and more defensive because of the academic attacks, and it's nice to be, to be free uh, again. Um, these uh, creatures uh, that we're looking at here, well this one of course is, they're very common in popular culture today. Uh, this is Anthony Hopkins done up in makeup as the wolf man, uh, of course Batman here. Um, creatures that are part animal and part human in form. Uh, the technical term for these creatures is therianthropes, from the Greek therion which means wild beast and anthropos uh, which means uh, man. Uh, here's a, a Japanese uh, snake uh, woman down, down here, of course, a mermaid, a bull man, a, a, a lion man. Very familiar uh, images in popular culture today. But let's just see how far back in the human story such images go. Uh, I think everybody's familiar with the story of Theseus and the Minotaur from ancient Greece. 